I am mining investor and editor of Resource Stock Digest, Gerardo Del Real, here with my partner, friend, colleague, Mr. Nicolas Hodge, who's also an investor and the publisher of Daily Profit Cycle. This is the 263rd episode of our weekly therapy session, and God knows we all need some therapy that we like to call investing in bizarro world. We're going to talk markets. We're going to talk about what we're watching, what we're investing in. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the madness out there in these interesting, interesting times. But before we get to that, Senor Nicolás, how are you today, sir? I am doing great, Gerardo. I was called me Nicolás. I mean, in Italian, it would be Nicola, right? Like um, that's what my grandmother would have used to say. I had a great, great aunt that um, would have been 109 years old the other day, my mom was telling me. And so I drew a quick family tree. I was going through the Italian names. Oh, look, there it is. I found it. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, probably because uh, I'm, I'm sure Mexicans do this in some respect. But in Mediterranean countries like Greece and Italy, people name like opposite generations, different names, and they go back and forth. So um, my great, great grandfather was Aquilino and then he had Attilio. I don't know why I'm thinking of this because you called me Nicholas. And then I love he it. had Aqu Aquilino and Italo, who was my grandfather was Italo. And then Aquilino had a son named Attilio. So they just go back and forth. Anyway, I had to like sketch it out. So I got it right in my brain. Sorry for that distraction. How are you? <laughs> no, 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 no. That was a good answer. I asked the question. Uh, can't, 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 can't frown upon getting an answer, right? That's a good thing. And a little bit of history for everybody out there. I'm not, not Mr. Hodges background there. No, look, I'm great. It's opening day. Let me get out of here, pontificate, and crystal ball it. We will win the National League Central this year. Um, it's March the 28th. You guys don't call me a fair weather fan when we do it. I've been at this since I was five years old when I first hit Chicago uh, back in 1983, 1984. So I'm excited about the season. I'm excited about opening day. Really looking forward to a fun year of baseball and Look, let's get right into it. We um we were fortunate enough to just wrap up our super cycle webinar, which focused on the commodity super cycle that we're in. And these things are rare, right? They're not very frequent. So when we get them, it's it's for us, we try to make sure that one, <laughs> we position ourselves, our friends, our family to take advantage of it, to make money off of it, to profit off of it. But also, obviously, we want to make sure that we position subscribers. So I hope that some of you got to check that out. For those of you that did not, uh, Mr. Hodge and myself put that together for y'all. We'll put a link up. I hope that you do check it out. I think it's going to be an extremely profitable 2024. And I say that because despite, again, new all-time highs in the gold price, we're at 2220 as we speak. It's probably the most anticlimactic um, new all-time high in a commodity that I've seen in some time. And what I mean by that is the equities are basically yawning it off. And I understand the producers not participating in the gains because, frankly, they've mismanaged the hell out of their portfolios and they haven't been able to keep up with the transitory inflation that Ben Bernanke told you was going to be. Turns out it's a little more sticky than uh, than he envisioned. But despite that, he's talking three rate cuts for this year. Gold is at a new all-time high. The equities aren't participating yet. I could sh It's like shooting fish in, in a barrel right now with some of the great gold equities and the prices are selling at. It's almost too easy, but it's only too easy if you don't mind being bored for a little bit and wait for the equities to re-rate higher, which they will do, I promise you folks. It's just a matter of when, not a matter of if. Thoughts on the gold price, thoughts on the mood and sentiment out there? <clears throat> um, I'm gonna, it's going to be a meandering answer. You mentioned 1983, 1984. Um, that was the year I was born, 83, also the last time the Orioles uh, were in the World Series. Um, I have my ball here, but not for opening day. It's a it's a T ball. I put it behind my back because I'm, I'm getting old, so I roll on it sometimes. It's um, <laughs> funny. Um, but the, <laughs> 83 was also the winding down of uh, one of the previous commodity super cycles. Is really the reason that date stuck in my mind because uh, you You're were the marketing the, genius, Mr. Hyde. Your work, everybody. <laughs> we, were, we, were talk, we, we were talking about uh, having the, the commodity super cycle webinar, and we of course talked about the show Dallas in that webinar, which I believe premiered the year of your birth, which was what, Mr. Del Rio? Nineteen seventy-eight. So that was the end or the tail end of sort of that commodity super cycle. Um, you know, uh, we talked about this a little bit on previous episodes, the sure. rationing of gas in the 1970s. Um, you know, we've talked about Mr. Dines a lot, who, um, you know, left us his business after he passed, which has been uh, two years ago now, rest in peace. 
Uh, but that was that era that, you know, the 60s and the 70s when he was recommending gold stocks, when he recommended gold at $35. And of course, you were talking about gold now being $2,200 an ounce. Um, and that was a, a, a super cycle, right? It lasted sort of um, a decade or two. Um, and then why we were talking about Dallas and, and sort of those dates was um, the U.S. you know sort of started flooding itself with oil, right? That that TV show was all about a wealthy Texas oil family, if I'm not mistaken. So yep. um, oil got cheap; it was abundant. The super cycle ended. We talked about cocaine and, and um, boom boxes in the 1980s. Everybody had a good time. The economy was great, but it wasn't a good time for um, commodities because commodities mm. were cheap. That's why the economy was great, right? Right. Um, and then that super cycle sort of repeated itself then in the 90s, which people will be more familiar with of the price runs that we saw then, um, including some that you participated in, like the rare earth run, um, sure. you know, when gold went to records in 2011, et cetera. So um, just a little background on super cycles there. And then, yeah, fast forward the tape, um, you had a soft uh, sort of, um, you know, a zero interest rate policy in the 2010s. We've had a decade bear market. The TSX is absolutely abysmal. The TSXV is is even worse. Um, I was actually working on some calculations to see how much market cap has been lost in the TSXV, but I, I'm not done yet. So we maybe we can talk about that another time. Um, it, it, and then that all sort of led in to percentage the terms, probably eighty five percent. Right. Yeah. And so I just got to do some reverse math to get it to, to to market cap terms as far as how much wealth has been erased, right, or sent to money heaven in commodity stocks. But that always reverses, right? And so. Um, that's how I was going to wind up my answer. Um, you know, the, the 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 webinar that we did is all about how we're in a commodity super cycle started in 2020. It had a pullback in, in 2022 and 2023. Um, and now prices are, are taking back off and what we're labeling as phase two of the commodity, commodity super cycle. And spot on. I mean, spot on timing wise, yeah, like you were yeah, saying. Better I mean, lucky than good, up, right? An all time record high today. I finally saw of the mainstream media talking about cocoa prices. And now we're seeing bars about uh, or memes with chocolate bars saying how rich you I'm are. I love with the cocoa. <laughs> and this is no different than two years ago when the commodity super cycle kicked off. Remember, people were carrying gasoline in plastic bags. And if you had a truck bed full of lumber, that meant you were a millionaire because lumber and prices were inflating so fast. That was just the kickoff of the super cycle. And so anyway, now we're in phase two. We even talked about orange juice in, in the webinar that we put out. So... Um, you know, soft commodities, hard commodities, liquid commodities, things that are heavy when you drop them on your foot. These things are um, reinflating. You've got copper still at four, et cetera, and on down the line. So um, I'm not sure if that was any sort of answer, but that's what's going on with the commodity super cycle, how commodities move in waves, tied it to your birthday, tied it to mine, and tied it to Dallas. Is that good? Marketing genius at work, folks. You got it here free on the Bizarro World podcast. No, look, and, and the follow-up question was sentiment as it relates to the equities because the commodities themselves are absolutely performing. Even palladium is, is, is you know, about to break a thousand again after a nasty, vicious correction and pullback that we've seen largely due to the fact that all the industrial metals uh, were trading as industrial metals. And, you know, when you have the world's biggest economy in China slowing down, um, that's going to take a lot of demand off the table. That is reversing course. I think China's got a lot of pressure. The elected officials have a lot of pressure from their citizenry to stimulate and inflate and kind of do what Powell's doing here, as disingenuous as he is, by telling us that inflation is good for us. I promise you, folks, unless you are wealthy and own assets, inflation is not good for anyone, right? And so, look, Sentiment in the equity space, what are your thoughts there? Do you agree that there's definitely a bifurcation there, a disconnect between what the commodity equities are doing versus the actual commodity price? I mean, it's it's pretty uh, apparent if you look at the GDX or the GDXJ um, versus the gold price, there's, there's definitely been a disconnect. Those um, equities are nowhere near the levels they were the last time, you know, gold price hit highs. Um, so, uh, you know, this is an ongoing discussion, right? What changes that? For a while, it was $2,000 gold. Well, okay, we got that. And then it was $2,100 gold. And it's like, okay, we got that now. So uh, now we even have $2,200 gold, gold. So we're here around month end. Um, I like to see how it closes the, the month, of course. That, that's always an important number. I think you, you're going to get a very strong monthly close to gold. That's one thing. Um, lots of people have been writing about, you know, the Chinese buying of gold. Brian London has been writing about it. 
um, who's the Fed chair? Not the Fed chair, excuse me. The the lady that they nominated to the Fed who didn't get oh, confirmed. Yeah, yeah. She's I, a little I, bug. Shelly, I think her name is. Yep, 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 yep. Um, she's been writing about it, and then so other people have picked up on it. So there's there's some there's some gold buying coming out of Asia. And what's interesting to me is that there has been some uptick, right? So um, I recommended a basket of copper stocks two weeks ago, like big copper stocks. I mean, an ETF, right? The Southern Coppers of the world, et cetera. Um, that's up 10%, 12% Ooh, in two weeks. I mean, that's not a little move when you're talking about, you know, global e equity. So they're starting to catch a little bit of a bit. Um, I, I look at the GDXJ, it is ticking up higher. Still got a couple of bucks to go to a, a technical breakout, which is, I think is at the 39 level. It's probably at 35 or $36, but it has been ticking higher. Now, the reason I bring that up is one, you asked about it, but two. <laughs> It's a good reason uh, to bring it up. <laughs> uh, the S&P continues to hit new highs, but not um, on the back of the Magnificent Seven, right? So for a while, we were talking about the Magnificent Seven driving it, um, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you know, the S&P continues to hit all-time highs, uh, not being driven anymore by um, the Teslas, uh, the, yep. the Googles, and now not even the NVIDIAs of the world, right? So uh, it's a broadening of the bull market. And, and what I mean why I bring that up is if the bull market is going to broaden, maybe it can broaden into some of those uh, commodity equities. And, you know, if some of these trillion dollar market cap stocks are going to bleed out a, a couple of hundred billion, you know, that, that capital could potentially find a home uh, in mining equities, junior mining equities. We were talking about a second ago, the market cap of the TSXV. It's something like $40 billion, Gerard. Um. So uh, these companies, NVIDIA's and, and Google's, I know people to bring this point up all the time, but they fluctuate that in a day, their market cap, right? So um, it doesn't take a lot when it happens. Uh, a couple other points I was going to bring up. What is it? Um, they're just going to be rambling. Um, you'll see some of these equities on the TSXV are so debased so starved of volume that, you know, $10,000 worth of buying comes in and these, these stocks are going up, you know, 30, 40, 50, a hundred percent just on small Easy amounts work. of buying. So Easily. That's what, that sort of relates to the other thing I just said about, you know, the market caps and how tiny they are. And then I guess crypto worth mentioning, um, because people talk about, you know, crypto has been stealing gold's limelight. Well, I'm not so sure they're, they're both yeah. sort of at all time record highs. Uh, maybe the equities in a sense, because people used to gamble more, I guess, on junior equities. And now you have this whole altcoin universe. I'm not sure what fixes that, but it's the mentality that's interesting to me. So because um, I think the mentality applies to junior mining just the same way it does to altcoins. And that's this. I haven't talked to you about this yet, but maybe you've come across it. This idea of financial nihilism. Um, on. Ben, ben Hunt at Epsilon Theory has been posting about this. And, and some of those people over there have been writing essays. Essentially, it's boils down to the younger generation thinking they're so fucked financially that it's, you know, YOLO, right? That's why it explains, you know, this um, call buying, these Reddit meme stocks. The sure, if I'm going to stay broke, was. why not go, you know, speculate my $3,000 I have in the bank on the coin that exactly. might turn it into 300000 Completely get it. So That's how I got into junior resource equities. <laughs> well, that's it, right? <laughs> so just intellectualizing a little bit, right? Financial nihilism makes it sound smart, but that's it at the end of the day. These, these, this generation or parts of this generation are so broke that they don't think putting a hundred bucks a week in an IRA is ever going to do it for them. Right. So they're it's not, to, yeah. So <laughs> roll the dice. Right. And so, um, anyway, I'm not sure how that cart and force get aligned, but well, you know, once these, the tiny equities start doing what they've done in, in, in past cycles, I think that obviously begets more capital. So, uh, and then you'll talk to people like, you know, a mentor of ours who will say, the entire market's got to sort of crash first before the resource sector can have its upleg because that's, you know, how it's gone in his experience. And that's not untrue. I mean, two or three years after 2008, hopefully we'll have to have a crash and then wait another two to three years. But, um, you know, markets and irration irrationality and solvency and all that, it's always interesting. It, it, it is always interesting. Uh, it's funny, as you were talking about Bitcoin and gold, uh, I, I couldn't help but think like of an analogy and, you know, my dumb childish brain. I was thinking it's like when the wife gets along with the mistress and they go out shopping together and they're buddy buddy and everybody's <laughs> just happy. Guys, it doesn't have to be one or the other. They can both get along. So uh, just putting that out there. You can own both. You can make money off of both. I think both are headed much higher. I am by no means a crypto expert. I don't even own any crypto. However, our in-house expert, Mr. Chris Curl, who has made, you know, 100 percent plus gains in our personal corporate portfolio with the fifty thousand dollars we handed off to him to to, to allocate. Um, he does, and he believes it's headed much, much higher. Everyone should absolutely be subscribing to that service if you are speculating in the crypto space. It's well worth the money. 
and he covers not just Bitcoin, but the whole gamut of altcoins. And, you know, he believes that a lot of these coins are going to see massive, massive quadruple digit runs, not in 10 years, not in five years, but in the next 12 months. So for those of you that want to YOLO it in a more educated um, fashion, Mr. Curl service is top notch. I'll put it up against any crypto service in the business. And you don't even have to buy the coins themselves Ooh. anymore, right? I mean, um, some don't have a, you know an alternative listing, but you know, buying ETH, buying Bitcoin, et cetera, there's financial instruments you can use to do that. I've been doing that personally, following some of what he's been writing. I own, um, you know, a, a Bitcoin ETF. I own an ETH ETF. I own a, a blockchain ETF. And <laughs> so um, I'm out there. Uh, I guess I'm not YOLOing with um, a crypto exchange, but... I am putting in those inside a converted Roth IRA that I'll never have to pay tax on again. So if I do happen to win that YOLO bet, it'll at least be tax free. There you go. There you go. Um, I want to touch on lithium. You know, lithium is 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 obviously has been very, very good to us. We made a lot of money in the lithium space the past couple of years. We had a pretty um, vicious consolidation that about a month or a month and a half or so I, I, I said I thought was bottoming and, and turning. That's It's played out not to, you know, pound my chest or whatever it's just math right you can see it um but 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 it's bottomed and it's clearly you know trickling back higher sentiment is trickling back higher and i can't help but notice that minrez albemarle and pilbara each had their own auctions um to sell lithium um in the market and then you know the point of that was price discovery and you know the other point the the, the silent cold war point is to prove that the numbers coming out of China are bullshit, right? And sure, sure enough, I mean, they're getting 20 to 25% premiums to the spot price, which to me is an indication of where that price is headed. I believe the lithium price is headed higher. I believe the Patriots of the world, the Q2s of the world, I won't give you any more names, but those are two of my top holdings. I think they're headed much higher. And for those of you that haven't participated yet in the lithium super cycle, it's a good time to get back in, excuse me. Thoughts on yeah. lithium there, Nick? Um, I mean, you mentioned the names, uh, some of which you recommend that you know people can yep. subscribe and, and and read about it in your monthly issues. I cover uh, a lithium company as well. There's you know no shame and and buying an ATF as well. Lit has has been sold off. I see the price is starting to come back. You mentioned uh, a week or two ago a, an auction that was canceled because somebody came in and, and offered a high enough price that the um, company didn't have to have an auction. Um, I see the prices of lithium themselves, um, at, at least in terms of, you know, dollars uh, per ton of lithium carbonate. It was, they got really cheap, you know, they were, uh, yeah. just for context, the year or two ago, some $80,000 a, a ton there, give or take, right? Um, they fell all the way down uh, closer to ten or $12,000 a ton recently, uh, but they've been perking back up. So I haven't looked in a couple of days, but um, I'm pretty sure in March they've gone from something like thirteen or $13,500 a ton to... Um, you know, sixteen or, or sixteen thousand five hundred dollars a ton. That's a twenty percent move, and that's the official move, which you know you're saying is is, is likely underreported. Um, the, the other thing that's interesting is you know uh, how the news gets reported, and it's like shark attacks or train wrecks or bridge collapses, right? When when something Man. happens, everybody gravitates around it, right? Like I remember last year, every train derailment got reported. Like there's train derailments every day that that don't get reported, and I was saying that at the time. It's Sort of the same thing with the flight stuff in Boeing recently. Like, you know, multiple flights get diverted every single day for some maintenance reason or another. So we just happen to be reporting them in, here in the in the recent memory. In um, Boeing's case, being diverted is the best thing that might happen to you on a Boeing plane. I traveled last week, and believe you me, I was looking at the itinerary to see what kind of plane I was on. And I, I, don't, I don't sweat easily, but I could tell you it was a Boeing, and I kept looking out the window. Not that I could do anything about it, but yeah. I got some uh, personal mail after we discussed the, uh, <laughs> Boeing, bomb? the Boeing, the Boeing, the Boeing whistleblower <laughs> potentially, potentially uh, <clears throat> Jeff Epsteining himself last week. So somebody wrote in. I have to tell you about that. Um, but no, what I was going to say is, um, you know, <laughs> last year uh, everything negative was uh, everything lithium was negative sentiment. Right? Sure, Look, Ford is everything. canceling. It's Ford is canceling. It's F one fifty. They can't sell these cars. This and that. And this car's on fire. And Lordstown and Fisker's going bankrupt and it was all negative, right? And then yep. it's, it's interesting to see like how the, the sentiment turns, right? And that was, 
you know, commensurate with the price of lithium going down. Here, the price of lithium starts going up, and I'm seeing price, the articles rather out of like the Financial Times. I was reading one the other day. Here, I have it up because I obviously keep all my tabs open forever. Um, <laughs> zombie, zombie car factories on the rise in China as buyers opt for EVs. Um, and what this was saying is that a, a couple of years ago, 27, 2018, this article was about um, Hyundai, I believe it was. Hyundai set up uh, factories in China to build ICE cars, internal combustion cars, you know, new Hyundais with that burn gasoline. Well, that was only, what, what year is it, 2014? I mean, that's six years ago, right? So uh, they're saying that these uh, factories are already defunct because- It's 2024, but I, I, I get your point. Yeah. 2024, so it's been six years because it was yeah, yeah. 2018, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said 2014. I, said, I just didn't want to confuse oh, yeah, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, For once, I paid been, attention. It's only been six years that they can't, <laughs> Hyundai can't sell enough gas cars in China to make the factory worthwhile. So they've got a factory that they only want to build internal combustion cars in because EVs are selling so well in China. And that speaks to what you were saying about the um, the actual price and the the, the you know, the reality of the market as opposed to headlines and the sentiment. So anyway, I've been a bit rambly today, but uh, I thought that story it, was interesting. It, it's the perfect segue because I wanted okay. to talk copper, right? It, it, it looks like it just wants to stay flirting with that $4 level. And I was reading a note. I fucking hate agreeing with Goldman Sachs, but um, I, I was reading a note from Goldman Sachs earlier this week, and it basically said what we've been saying, again, not to pound our chest, but I'm just saying, you want a position ahead of trends that are obvious to even the simplest of folks like myself. They anticipated a copper surplus of 2 to 3% this year. They are now anticipating a copper shortfall of 2 to 3%. The reason being the most obvious stuff, right? Again, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but this is just common sense. Guidance on production, lower. Um, grades, depleting. Reserves, depleting. Discoveries, lower exploration budgets lower so all of these things then throw in geopolitical um turbulence just as a kicker and you have again i wrote about it this past week the perfect storm for this commodity super cycle and i, I i'm excited and giddy because it's been a good couple of years it's going to be it's going to be another good at least couple of years and doesn't mean everything goes straight up but the trend is clear as all day to even the simplest of people like myself mm -hmm. yeah you're getting this global economy is opening up um, you were talking about copper and I, like I said, I got bullish on copper earlier this month. You mentioned yep. China, um, but you know, China. they're going to do, they're gonna have to do stimulus was it's an election year. A, my Trump's got to come he, back. He, he might've just made himself a billion or two with this, uh, true social. I mean, this guy's amazing. Anyway, um, <laughs> China was saying, you know, they need stimulus essentially. And that was one of the reasons that I was getting bullish on China is, you know, reopening the economy, but also that they were going to need stimulus, right? They had their. I forget what they call it, Chinese People's Congress or something like that. Some, you know, it's like the Anti-Inflation Act or whatever, the People's Congress of China. But anyway, um, they said that they were going to hit 5% growth. They can't do that without stimulus. And so uh, you were talking about copper. One of the things I heard is that, you know, how they have all these um, apartment complexes, cities built that aren't, you know, inhabited or, or populated. That was one of the things I was reading is that one of the stimulus could be putting plumbing in those buildings, right? Um, what does that entail to, you know, plumb out to an apartment complex, for example? Yeah. So anyway, um, if stimulus comes to China, it's definitely good for commodities. And I think we're already seeing that bear out in, in some of the commodity prices. And, and look, we've talked the Inflation Reduction Act, right? The comically named Inflation Reduction Act, which actually has, again, I've been a big uh, fan of the actual legislation, the piece of legislation that pertains to critical metals, um, has been very influential in, in getting projects greenlit and you know, you have Thacker Pass with uh, with uh, Lithium Americas and other projects. Quebec's turning into a battery metals hub, slowly but surely building out its infrastructure. And so I think, you, you know, we talk future demand and I, I, I think we really underestimate on the infrastructure side um, the potential there. We had a tragedy and in your, your neck of the woods, right? Uh, Baltimore, Maryland this week, where a bridge literally just an excuse my language, folks. This is the part where I get upset. Fucking collapsed. Like a boat hit it and the fucking bridge just completely collapsed. And so for those of you that may look at this and say, well, Gerardo, you're being a bit too cynical. I mean, it's an accident and a boat hit a bridge. It, it, that That's an accident. Absolutely. That is a tragedy. But the fact that we consistently get a D as in double Ds um, every year on the state of our nation's infrastructure should be criminal. And, and again, this is with 
either a Trump in office or a Biden in office or an Obama in office. You you pick your politician that you want to fanboy or fangirl out on. The, neither of them have done very much. I will say to Mr. Biden's credit, he has worked on the highway system. And again, the Inflation Reduction Act is a step in the right direction. We absolutely, on a global scale, need to fast track our infrastructure needs because it's a shame that a country as beautiful as the U.S. gets a D every year and then Flint, Michigan still doesn't have clean drinking water. You got to Flint faster than I did. I was going to get there too. Um, that's what makes it a super cycle, though, is what I was going yep. to say. So um, prices are cyclical, right? They're a sine wave. Price goes up, supply comes online, satiates demand, price goes down, supply comes offline, et cetera, et cetera. What makes it a super cycle is when you get these other things la layered on into it, right? And we go through some of them in the super cycle. You just talked about the, the Inflation Reduction Act and electric vehicles. Uh, and it's the same thing with the industrial cycle and the need to replace long term, long lead times, high capex infrastructure assets, right? I mean, uh, the Civil Society of Engineers has been giving the America a D on its infrastructure report card every year that I've been doing this. I've been doing this for 15 or 16 years. I used to write reports about that um, infrastructure report card. It's always the same and it seemingly never improves about, um, you know, how many water main breaks there are per year and how that snarls traffic, how much water we lose through leaky pipes that have never been replaced, et cetera, et cetera. You mentioned the, the lead pipes in at Flint, Michigan, for example. All that stuff gets put off until it doesn't, right? Until yep. whatever, until a bridge collapses or until X. And then, you know, you start to allocate money to it. And that's just one of the things that makes it a super cycle, right? Because not only... Um, you know, how the prices of metals been debased so that new supply uh, wasn't coming online because new capital wasn't being raised for exploration, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, that's just the normal cycle. Now you have this vast need, right, that's going to become urgent for um, iron and steel and copper and nickel on down the line, right? And so um, anyway, I, I'll stop there because that's a pretty good point and I think it's pretty clear and I don't want to ramble, but yeah, that's what makes it a super cycle is all these other things that that happen at the same time. A lot of money to be made, folks. Just got to get positioned right and be a little bit patient. Let 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 these markets re-rate. I, I, I want to say a, a gentleman emailed me earlier this week. He emailed the team, Sean G. Shout out to Sean G. I guess he, uh, he was watching the podcast a couple of weeks ago. And in his words, he uh, and I haven't even read the comments, so apologies, Sean. He uh, commented on YouTube about Han, and I was talking about Han, and everybody knows Han is my favorite copper speculation um, and my second largest position and, and will soon be <laughs> substantially larger. Uh, but anyhow, so he said that he posted a comment without thinking it through, and he said, rightfully so, I got trolled. So, Sean G, appreciate you listening, man. Shout out to you. No one should get trolled. Apologies for whoever trolled you for whatever the comment was, but always, always feel free to comment and reach out. Anything that we could do, whether we agree or not, we are happy to have a civil dialogue around here. It's the way that Nick and I like to do things. So thanks for watching and encourage you to continue opining. I look for the comment. Uh, I, I didn't see it, but <laughs> um, thanks for calling it out. You know what I was thinking of when you were talking about a troll is I've been watching the Daily Show, <laughs> right? Because John Stewart's back. And yes. When he was covering the, the State of the Union, I know that's been a couple of weeks ago now. You might not remember, but. You know, they say, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States. And he comes <laughs> walking down the aisle. And he had to pass. Remember Marjorie Taylor? Oh, that was there fucking her, great, ah, man. And, her, and, her coat. and he was and like, John, John, John Stewart said that he had to go past the troll under the bridge. <laughs> John's great, man. I hope he runs for office one day. He, he gives it to, to the right and the left equally. Um, he catches flack from both sides. Everybody knows that he leans left, but it's really good to see, um, you know, somebody that, 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 you know, sticks it to both sides because we absolutely need that in this country. Um, trolling man, to the bridge is funny. Mm. Trolling to the bridge is hilarious. And, and Hey, you, you know, whatever they gave Mr. Biden that day, I actually went back and looked at the speech. Sounded pretty damn good. It was pretty damn witty. was pretty on point. However you feel about his policies. He was quick. He was sharp. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was a solid, solid speech. So whatever, whatever, whatever they pumped him full of that day um, works, right? <laughs> I'm brought to you by Mr. Biden's staff. So anyhow, uh, what else? I have else? to agree. Yeah. Although, now that we're talking about the State of the Union, I was watching, uh, I did watch, and I just don't like the taxes, man. I mean, they're going to they're gonna come for us. Uh, you know, that $400,000 level is, is a bit low. Me. 
Uh, here's another thing I'll say. Now I really will talk for a First second. First world so problems, like, folks. We know for yeah, those of you watching, no, you're like, no, fuck no Nick doubt. and Gerardo and their $400,000 threshold. Well, that was at, at a minimum, yes. right? I mean, 400000 and above is, is is what he was labeling as rich and needs to pay their fair share. So yeah, it's the fair yeah. share that I have an issue with, right? Same. Because I pay, believe me. No, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, pay yeah, my, yeah. Write my checks. And so um, I guess I wonder what fair share is. And I noticed this because I had read a New York Times article about paying your fair share. They mentioned it like three or four times in the article, that specific phrasing, your fair share, but never do they quantify or qualify like what a fair share is or looks like. So that worries me. So it worries me for a couple of reasons. Um, and then I'll be quiet. Um, one, because we pay in some cases more than people that are in that 0.1%, no, right? No doubt. Because we don't own no doubt. hundreds of millions or billions of dollars in equities that we can take loans against they write those loans off as expenses and then live on the loans, right? We're not wealthy enough to do that. And so we end up living, I'm not living, but you know, having a lot of um, equity gains, capital gains that we have to pay taxes on. So we pay our fair share. Um, so here's why that worry, worries me. One, because I know that that 0.1% will not pay more in taxes, right? No matter how they go after them. It's going to be the people who play by the rules, who actually file the taxes, claim their gains appropriately. And don't have, they have plenty, believe me, like you say, first world problems. We have plenty, we have enough, but not enough to um, negate new IRS rules or to work our way uh, around them in, in an effective manner. And then here's the other thing. Um, I, I was reading this Bloomberg article this week about, we'd often talk about wealth, wealth disparity and the K-shaped recovery, how the wealthy get wealthier uh, and, the, and the poor don't. Well, this is what this article was saying, is that <clears throat> I think, I don't know if it was since the stimulus or in the past 10 years, uh, since the COVID or the past 10 years, but the 0.1% have gotten richer, the 90% and below have gotten richer, but the 90 to 99.9, mm. not. Mm. And so it was very interesting to me, right? Because if you're going to lump the 400,000 in there as, you know, having enough and needing to pay their fair share... But they're not getting richer while the 0.1% is. It, it, I think there's some, I, I don't like the word silent majority, but there's a lot of folks in that 90 to 99% who are looking around about just politics and the state of things that haven't seen their wealth go up recently. Anyway, um, it worries me about the taxes. And I, I've got a whole tangent from the State of the Union, but I just remember him talking about no, 400000 and paying your fair share. And I just know the size of the checks that I'm already writing. And so yeah, that does, look, that, and, that does, and yeah, and, and I'm with right. you. Hence my rant last week or the week before that on central banks and the policies and why they infuriate me so much, despite the fact that I'm fortunate enough to be in that you know upper tier where, yes, we're making a fantastic living off of our investments and, and businesses and really fortunate to have you know the privileges that we have. We worked our ass off to get here, I might say, and risked a whole heck of a lot. However, we've also been you know, born in the right areas and, and, and fortunate enough that things make sense to us that happen to be rewarded well in this society. But we, we are the exception, Nick. And for most people, that is not the case. And it's why I'm so passionate about the super cycle webinar that we just put out. Like I hate to lead that into a marketing thing, but I really absolutely believe that, you know, fortunes are going to continue to be made during the cycle. And, and there's a lot of different ways that you can take advantage of it. It's not just uranium. It's not just lithium. It's not just if you're a gold bug, you know, it's copper. It's 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 all sorts of different vehicles. Pick pick, pick your vehicle and uh, jump in the car and then and, and, and go take it out for a ride. It's going to be a fun, profitable ride if you come along. And, you know, lives can change. I mean, I, I, I didn't grow up with much. And, and you know, thankfully now, you know, a mentor of ours jokes about my lazy river that I'm building, right? But we're in a position where, you know, you can build a lazy river for kicks uh, for your fun and family and friends to have a good time with. And so I say that not to brag. I say that to say I come from very, very humble beginnings. And again, been working my ass off uh, a long time to, to get to this point. But if Simple Simon over here can do it, you guys sure in the heck can. Well said. I would have tied it back as well to not only being bored in the right place, um, well, well, potentially the right time. We talked about 78 and, yeah. and 83. And um, yeah, we had to go through 2007 financial crash. But there's been other opportunities for us as, as long as you're able to identify them, which we have been able to do. So yeah, well said. Yeah, won't get all of them right. I promise you that. But I can also promise you the ones that we get right are going to count disproportionately well. And with that, I'm supposed to remind you all every single week, to go to dailyprofitcycle.com forward slash subscribe for not just my ranting and ravings and then Mr. Hodge's wit witty insight, but also 
our talented team of editors that cover everything from natural resource stocks to tech stocks to crypto. You name it, there's something there probably for everybody if you're speculating in asset classes. It's absolutely free, completely independent site, uh, no paid anything there. Um, and then we think it's a good source of information to at the very least kick the tires on the multiple asset classes you can profit from. Mr. Hodge, what are you watching this week? Um, not a whole lot, Gerardo. This, while we record this, was a light day of the week. Um, you know, next week I'll be traveling. So um, I'll be watching uh, you because I'll see you in, in Austin, Texas, and I'll see some of my wife's family in, in Houston. So um, I'm going to take it easy because it, it was a pretty dang busy March. Wor worked our ass off to put that webinar together for you all. I hope that the, those of you that got to see it, I've, I've had some really positive feedback already from a few people, but hope those of you that have gotten the opportunity to look at it can benefit some way. And again, just like I told Mr. Sean G, um, feel free to email either myself or our amazing staff with any questions, comments, concerns, disagreements, all good. Again, we're symbol around here, big boys with thick skin. So yeah, s s send it our way and always happy to have a respectful dialogue around any questions or comments you may have. Mr. Hodge, that's all I got for the week. I'm curious to see if the lithium uh, price continues its surge back higher. Um, I, I think by the end of this year, uh, lithium is going to be, you know, among others, uh, the flavor of the month again. I don't think we see 80,000 again, but I, I can absolutely see a scenario where 30 to 40,000 becomes, you know, the new norm. And at that price level, um, the better names in the space are going to be very, very profitable, especially from current levels. I'll be watching copper, of course. Um, I don't want to give any more picks because some of those are in the webinar and it's unfair to those uh, that took the hour or what have you to listen to me rant and rave and you pontificate um, and then went and, and you know, got got going with it. So I'll, I'll hold names, but some names in there, man, that I think are like, just, I don't have enough to buy or I'd be buying the entire company. Um, but I sure own a heck of a lot of uh, some of those names in there. So that's it. I'm Gerardo Del Real along with Mr. Nick Hodge. This was the 263rd episode of our necessary weekly therapy session called Investing in Bizarro World. Have a great, great week, everyone. Go Cubs. I hope you had a good Easter as well. We'll see you next week. Amen. Hey there, you independent-minded investor. If you like this video, make sure to tell us so by clicking the like button below. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss another one. And share it with everyone you know on social media. You can also click the link in the description below to check out more information-packed videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.